Okay, we're here with Ian at AES at the Javits Center, and we are talking about something that I just saw on the floor for the first time. This is very cool, and definitely thinking a little bit outside the wheelhouse of the typical recording industry that you find here. What's going on, Ian? Hi. Yeah, this is um, uh, an esports gaming interface. Um, a few years ago, we got involved with a company in China, wanted us to cover their esports event. So we have Intercom products that we currently have. Um, this was then developed specifically for gaming. So the idea with this is you've got multiple inputs on the back for analog in, SP diff, um, PC audio in. That will then give you your game audio through your headphones. You've got team audio here, which can come in from six other um, uni uh, six other Dante channels, up to 16 on there, through there, and then your own headphone volume there. So basically you can create a mix of the game, your teammates and yourself in your headphones. Um, you've got a, a push to talk button that can be latching, unlatching, with um, sort of depending on how you set it up. Um, we've also got dual headphone uh, amplifiers in there. For some tournaments, they require white noise to be played through a, an over set of headphones, so you can't hear the crowd sort of shouting or calling because the crowd sometimes have a better view of the game than the players do themselves. So there's quite a few other security. Um, issues with esports gaming because there's a lot of money at stake they're very worried about some people listening into other the other teams and getting information so there's um keeping it in two separate dante networks so you can keep them completely separate but this one we developed for the esports world cup where you've actually um they do a lot of mobile gaming so they'll use a mobile device to play the game on and then to communicate they need to talk to their teammates so this has C, uh, USB-C output to the mobile device and can power um, also gets the audio from the device and has an Ethernet connection to there so for a big tournament you're not relying on Wi-Fi to a phone you can actually have a wired connection which makes it obviously a much more reliable thing and again when the stakes are as high as they are with some of these tournaments they need that reliability so yeah so these were used this year at the Esports World Cup in uh, Saudi Arabia. I think there was 250 of these being used out there. So it's had a good run this year of testing. That's very cool. So, you know, outside of, you know, actual competitive gaming, are you seeing people pick this up for home use when their own gaming? I think in certain circumstances there are home uses, but it's generally if they're part of a bigger team, sort of for a tournament. Yeah. Um, we have looked at their mobile sort of home use, but I think with communication you get through a PC is generally okay for that. It's only when it's the higher stakes for these bigger tournaments they need something a little more reliable than just the PC to connect. And this is very exciting to me because I don't know another company that is going specifically into what I would consider professional game audio in this way not not the consumer side but more you know the esports professional side yeah. you know do you know of anyone else or is it really just not, blends not, up not the so stand it to this level no yeah. there are a few other products out there that use i think yamaha have built something that, that that can do a similar thing but no i think to go all, all in as we have with this i think we're the only people out there Okay, and you know, one thing that's always been interesting about Blend Sound for me is, you know, back in the day, you guys used to make beautiful analog mixers and stuff like that with transformer microphone preamplifiers. Yeah. Are you guys planning on doing anything like that in the future? Um, there's still, um, still, we've still got products out there that are still working, sort of 40 years down the line. So, yeah. <laughs> but no, I think we, we've moved much more into, well, there's an awful lot of live broadcast and yeah. crossover now into the live world. So we've got I.O. boxes that are Dante based. We're still doing all of our commentary units as well. So we've got a lot of commentary boxes out there, but whether we go back into the analog side of things, yeah, possibly not, but like it's, um, yeah. it's sort of moving on to the future with these. Hey, I totally get that. Glenn Sound is looking towards the future. That, that's wonderful to hear, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Lovely. Thank awesome. you. Nice